position in uh Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Courts Out Sound Podcast. Once again, I'm Josh Shevinoff. As always, welcome by the one and only man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. His name is Angel Ortega. A lot of stuff to talk about this week. UC Kansas City, UC Vegas 71, Bellator with two cards this week, as well as a whole lot of boxing. Before we get into that, we are obviously brought to you by two fantastic sponsors of the show, Rogue Energy and Elixir. Coach Soundoff. For 10% off of both of those, Rogue Energy to keep me fueled up, keep me going through my day, whether I'm at the gym, working from home, or playing video games, they keep me going, and they keep you going with code SOUNDOFF for 10% off. Meanwhile, Elixir, the exact opposite end of the spectrum, going to keep you very high with their Delta 8, 9, and 10 products, as well as HHC. They sell joints, gummies, dislets, gels, they got it all, and you can get it. For code sound off, 10% off. Angel, you see Kansas City going down over the weekend out in our backyard of Kansas City, Missouri, at the Team Mobile Center, RIP Sprint Center. Uh, but I know, a, right? It was the Sprint Center when we went. We're old enough to, to live that now. By exactly. The way. But now it's the Team Mobile Center. And um, look, man, uh, hell of a card. Hell of a card, top to bottom, man, in that main event. Max Blessed Holloway, the Blessed Express keeps on rolling, man. It's it's lapping these boys now, all right? Uh, defeating Arnold Allen by unanimous decision, 49-46, 49-46, 48-47. 46, Granted, you know, we were, we were drinking and from the seventh row in the crowd, but what did you think about the fight? What did you think about the decision? There were some people <laughs> on Twitter who uh, thought Arnold Allen deserved the win. Was there really that many? They, there were a couple of people who, you know, have high, high profile fan bases and were, are very well known that thought Arnold Allen, for some reason, won on Saturday. So. Oh, oh man, Josh, call him out right now. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not calling anybody out. I mean, call, call them, out. call them by first, last, and middle name and social security number right now. I, I was about to say, dude, I'm so pissed off right now. I'm literally going to go ahead and leak their phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, what? just I'm just so angry about it. No, I mean, if, if he scored the fight for Arnold Allen, I don't really care. What I will say is that um, I thought that Max Holloway won, and I'm sure you're in agreement with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought he just had the cleaner punches. I thought he controlled the fight for the most part. I, and also, even in round five, I saw a lot of people saying, and even Dana said that if Arnold went forward in the fifth round, like he had all fight, he would have had a lot more success. And I felt like I was going crazy because I'm like, if he would have gotten, if he would have gone forward, he would have just gotten knocked out like he almost did in the fifth. I mean, what do you think about that talk? Uh, I've seen a lot of people being that Arnold kind of more lost the fight more so than Max won it. What do you think about that? I don't know. There is that whole, I've listened to that a few times now where I've heard uh, people say that he should have came forward. He should have done what he did in the fifth, which, Look, when you see how in spurts it worked well, I, I can understand that. But I, I, the thing I kept hearing is he he tried to fight a technical standout fight against Max Holloway, or, or, you know, and that was just not the play. And and I agree. And I told you, I'm I, I remember we we're sitting there, and I'm like, I'm surprised he hasn't tried to mix in a takedown in here just to throw him off. Like, not necessarily to get it, but just so it's there, you know. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. now, now we got to worry about this. Now we got to worry about that, or. He go he dips under and follows it over with an overhand or whatever. Right? I don't know, but I, I expected a more dynamic game plan rather than Arnold Allen trying to stand with Max Holloway on the feet. Because I, I like like a fellow member on the card took the right approach. It just ended up working out. And Billy Q trying to take down at some Barbosa. He's like, yeah, fuck that. I'm not gonna try to stand out against this guy. I know better. And look, mm-hmm. it, it, I I think the fight in in some aspects was relatively close. I I can understand why Arnold thought maybe I can win this on the feeder. I I I have the capable stand up to 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 win this fight, but it, it it just wasn't enough, and it was very evident. Max had the cleaner, better output, and at times landed some pretty heavy strikes too. Uh, you got to give credit to Arnold though; he got his own licks in there as well, and had his own little spurts, and it was kind of and got got the crowd going a little bit. I mean, we were in there, we heard it, we heard the people's reactions when Arnold had a 
his his uh, success in there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, he, and he did have some success, and I completely understand why. If he thought going into this fight, I can win this fight on the feet, I get why because it was competitive. There were definitely swing rounds in there. Were like, I don't want to say like, okay, there there are close but clear fights. I thought this was that. If you somehow gave the fight the, the fight to Arnold Allen, I wouldn't really get it, but. You know, weird things happen, right? I get why Arnold Allen thought that. I do think that a lot of the kind of talk after the fight about, like, well, just be more aggressive, just do this. And it was like, man, if it was that easy, fuck, Max Holloway wouldn't only have, like, what, five losses on his record? And, like, three of those are from one guy. So, um, yeah, I mean, Max Holloway's just that good, man. And in terms of his future, he said he's going to stick around at 145. Uh, he teased that one day maybe he could go to lightweight, but right now, featherweight's the goal. And he named... A uh, fight he wants next. He said that of all the guys from whenever he was champion, he pretty much fought them all from his kind of era whenever he dominated the featherweight division, except for one guy, and that was Korean Zombie. Uh, and he said Korean Zombie's the last OG that he has not fought, and he wants to fight him. Korean Zombie later answered the call out. He said, "Yes, we love that for love that to be his retirement fight." What do you think, man? I think his retirement fights go. Um, this is this is probably <laughs> the best one, honestly, for the Korean Zombie. I mean, I think it'll be fun, right? Obviously, but I'm just like, I'm, I don't know, dude. We saw, we saw how Korean Zombie looked in his last fight. Mm-hmm. But, gra- but yeah. granted, though, that 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 is peak Volk, though. Like those three performances, uh, in like, the, uh, like the fight before that and the fight after that are peak Volk. So at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, was it Korean Zombie or was it that Volk just looked that fucking great that night? Mm-hmm. You know, and I guess, I guess we'll find out whenever if they do decide to make that. Which, if they do, that's fun, I think. Uh, but at the same time, I was just like, dude, if it, if if Max looks like a, a bit of what he did against Calvin Cater, and uh, and we saw how he and we saw how Zombie looked against Volk, I just I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of that. But you never know. Uh, it'll be a fun fight. Zombie's a fun guy, so if that's what he wants to do. Then sure. And I think actually it was Zombie that said he actually kind of wanted that fight as well. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, for me, here's kind of the way that I look at it. I see a lot of people that are like, why would Max go off in this fight? He's just going to fuck him up, and he might do this and that. It's like, okay. I mean, probably. I'm definitely going to pick Max Holloway to win that fight. I'm a huge TKZ fan, but at the end of the day, he is older. And uh, it's going to be his last fight for a reason. At the same time, though, I mean, is it? I can't write him off. I mean, he's really only looked really terrible, and one fight, and that was against Alexander Volkanovsky. He, and he obviously, people forget, he also took that fight on short notice, and he had a shoulder injury. That's why he's been out for a year, because he had to heal that shoulder, and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm fine with it, because people got to look at it this way, okay? Like, retirement fights, do you want him to have a Frankie Edgar retirement, where he's going to face Chris Gutierrez? Or do you want him... What we, what we were saying at the time, we could have had a Frankie Edgar versus Dom Cruz fight. You know what I mean? This is kind of a way, this is, this is that version, but for 145 for a legend like TKZ. Now, now what's the other version, Josh? Is that Ilya Tepura versus the Korean Zombie? Is that the other version? Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably it is. You gotta lay out both, bro. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so let's just hope that does not happen. Because, like, look, like, Max is gonna go out there. And Max is probably going to beat him up, but, like, I don't think Max Hall is going to go out there and bludgeon the Korean zombie like a lot of these other younger guys would. Like, he's – and even then, Max gets hit a lot, and Korean zombie has power. So I get I get why they would book that fight. I think the fight makes a lot of sense next. And even if it's not, like, you know, the winner of that fight's not going to fight for a title, but it's a fun fight. And sometimes you can just have fun fights, you know. That's that's a thing you can do. Um, speaking of a fun fight, man, um, Coleman event. Edson Barboza, holy shit. Uh, most guys, Edson Barboza, like an Edson Barboza, the way he knocked out Billy Smith, <sighs> that would be a top three highlight for just about most fighters. I don't even think that's a top five for Edson Barboza. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's up, it's in his list, it's up there, but top five, uh, I mean, you know, with other highlights he's got, it's, you know, it's hard to compete. Yeah, it really is. And, him getting that big win, man. What do you think? It was sick. I was, this is one of my more confident picks of the week. Uh, I, I said if, if I had to have two locks, it, it would have been Edson and Max, without a doubt. Outside of that, I thought all the other fights were up in the air. 
Yeah, fair enough, man. I mean, I thought that Billy Q, I thought there was no way he was going to stand with it's in Barboza. And to be fair... He didn't try to. He did not try to. Uh, and to be fair, he also didn't stand long with him either. So um, he just got put down real early. Because uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw it, but whenever Billy Q goes in for the takedown, if you miss the fights, it's in Barboza lands a perfect knee as Billy Q was going in. He went right into it, man. Just devastating. And Edson Barboza, dude, he's 37 years old. That means he's almost weight. 40. He's almost 40. He's a grown man. He's almost 40, okay? And uh, he's down at 145, and he's still doing it, dude. And I, I, I'll i be honest. I'm somebody who kind of wrote him off. I thought after the Giga Chikaze knocked him out, after Bryce Mitchell dominated him, I kind of wrote off Edson Barboza. But, uh... I think that was probably a bit premature because this is a huge win over a younger guy in Billy Q, a guy that was coming on, getting some big wins. And Benson Barboza, he just he held the gate firm, so to speak. He's obviously, I don't think Benson Barboza, you know, is a gatekeeper necessarily, but he uh, he held it here, man. What do you think? Uh, what do you think's next for him, man? I think at 145, Benson Barboza, he's turning into this. They can match him up with just about anybody and have it be a solid matchup. No, I agree, I agree with you on that. I think it's just anybody, anybody who is close to him in the ranks or anybody who's coming up who makes sense, right, and and is a fun matchup. I, I just think you you need to put him in spots where I, I don't know. I don't I don't, I don't want to put it like uh, where he can shine necessarily, but give him fun matchups that make sense still. You know what I mean? Like Not competitive. Pe- Yes, competitive, fun matchups, yes. That's the best way I can put it. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at, too. I think Edson, I mean, I don't got to see him go out there. Because I think Billy Q, I think it's a solid matchup. Billy Q is a guy that's in his early 30s. If he could beat Edson, then you kind of know, like, okay, he's kind of coming on. He might be a contender. This is kind of his last kind of window, early 30s, to kind of make that run. I think Edson being kind of uh, a, a test for those sort of guys is solid, or at the very least, old legends, guys who are kind of trying to make a run, but you're not, you're not sure about them. I think Edson serves that role perfectly. But, like, Bryce, for example, Bryce Mitchell, who was, like, 16-0 and 0 at the time, and we kind of knew he was really good, I don't need to see Edson Barboza versus Bryce Mitchell, you know what I mean? Um, Edson Barboza versus Billy Q, Edson Barboza versus guys in the 145-pound division where it's going to be competitive, it's going to be fun, but... Nobody's gonna get hurt too badly. I think uh I think that's probably the best format to use him in. What what about Edson Barbosa versus Korean zombie, Josh? Um I'd I'd be down. I'd be down for that. I'd watch that fight. That sounds fun. That does sound fun. I I mean I didn't even think about that fight being a possibility. But yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. I thought about it now, I was like, dude, that sounds fun as fuck. That does. That does sound pretty fun. Two OGs, two guys who've been around forever. Because even as much as, I guess, you know, I don't really look at Max and TKZ being from the same era, but I guess that's technically correct because Max has been around forever. You know, I mean, you don't really think about that. He's been fighting since he was 18, 19, 20 18 something. years old, I believe, yeah. Got in the UFC at 19. He's crazy. Been... Yeah. But regardless, yeah, I think Edson Barber was a huge win by him. Excited to see what he does next. As far as the rest of this UC Kansas City card goes, man, um, bit of a mixed bag. I mean, we had some big fights, some big moments, especially, you know, guys like Zach Cummins picking up wins, hometown boys. But uh, what do you think, man, overall top to bottom? I mean, like I told you that night, overall I thought the card was anywhere from all right to good. I think it was a little bit elevated for us since we got to be there and we had to, we got to have that experience of, you know, being in the crowd, especially on the floor and everything like that. So I think that added a bit to it. The fight themselves, I think I think the card started off hot. You know, a lot of the finishes came on early in, in, uh, on the fight card. They were early in the prelims. I think, like, what is it, out of the first five, three were finishes or something like that? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have it pulled up right in front of me right now. But most of the excitement came there. It kind of slowed down after that. I thought... Uh, Bill Alguia's fight was one one to to remember, obviously, especially with uh, the stuff we've always said after that fight that we don't have to repeat on air, but we'll let that one slide for now. And then the double fake retirement, too, which Dana was pissed off about. 
Yeah, well, I mean, on the Bill Algeo one, that one's hilarious. I mean, I'll give, I mean, it was a little funny. I'll give it. It was, it was funny because it's like good. I mean, hey, I mean, here's the way I look at it. I'm from Kansas City. Do I like people shitting on the city? Of course not. Nobody likes it. But at the same time, I'm very well aware that we have our downfalls. And, uh, you know, also good for him if he can become a character and get paid more and have more success. That's awesome. I do think it was funny, though, Angel. I do think it was funny, you know, um, because it, the whole – do you know why he said it? Uh, why? Actually, is because, there, he's he's, an e- because he's an Eagles fan. Oh, he got, okay. He's, he's mad that the Eagles lost to the Chiefs. And I guess we had uh, – do you know do you know Chateau Milk Company? Yes. We put – they put out a milk – titled Eagles Tears after love, we beat them in the Super Bowl. I love that. And so Bill Algeo responded by proceeding to cry about it. <laughs> Perfectly proving the point. <laughs> by the way, Chateau Milk tastes all fucking good. I'm just Dude, Chateau that. Milk, hey, Chateau Milk, you can say whatever you want. I bet if Bill Algeo tasted that milk, he'd be like, shit. You know something, te- these tears really do taste good. Like, these tears really do taste good. And he called us... What did he call us? He said we're we're Bud Light drinking, Uber driving. Yes, was, yeah, software. Definitely. And that's funny coming from a guy from Philly. I mean, you got Philly thinks they're tough. You know, people, Angel, you know what it's like. You tell people online you're from Kansas, they think you're from fucking. You think you're Dorothy and shit, Wizard of Oz. Right. They think you live. Nah, in man, fucking- I'm from Kansas City, where fucking. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm from I'm from Kansas City, where my house got robbed three times as a kid. You know what I mean? That's my Kansas City. <laughs> five top five crime rate in the whole U.S. <laughs> yeah, man, we're out here. We're put, we're not putting up St. St. Louis St. Louis numbers, but or Detroit numbers. You know, we but. got like two zip codes that take, that account for like fucking <laughs> whole lot of murder, man. Um, so yeah, shout out shout out Bill Algeo. I did think that I did think it was really really funny. Um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah, I mean, and you mentioned the double retirements, too. Dana got really upset about that, uh, specifically with Clay Guida doing it. I thought that was even funnier. And he was like, you, you you fake retired to say happy birthday to somebody? And it was... But it ended up being his mom, right? It was his fucking mom, dude. It's like, come on, Dana. It took, like, fucking 30 seconds, dude. It's not... <laughs> Gr- granted, he didn't know, right? Like, Dana didn't know. But no, no, I understand. And I understand it's live TV, and I understand they have schedules, but, like... Come on, man. We we've all seen enough UFC broadcasts. They they cut back to the broad to the broadcast booth like seven times where they talk for like five minutes about nonsense that we don't care about. Okay, Clay Guida having one moment is not the end of the world. So, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, Dana did get did got kind of get pissed off about the the fake retirement. Oh, yeah, uh, but the, major, major tilt. Yeah, the the double retirement was an all time moment though. Like I, you know, we're gonna be able to say, Angel, we saw that because there's never been a double retirement since then that I know of. Can I ask you that? Can, I was like, I can't think of another one. I yeah, think I, I even asked you the night of too. Yeah, I tried to do some digging, but I couldn't find anything. So I couldn't. I, I not to my knowledge. By the way, uh, the fact that we got baited into almost four retirements that night is crazy. Hilarious. I like how, but I mean, oh yeah, I didn't mention that part of it. Bill, I'll give the guys and see it. The whole thing he did at the start was took off his gloves like a fake retirement, you know. Um, so that's kind of how he led into it. I was like, oh, you know what? Which is nobody cared about the fake retirement, but they did pop for the the shitting on KC. So smart. Um, yeah, dude. And but then obviously the big one was Zach Cummins and uh, our boy Ed Herman, dude. Two. Oh, ended up being a beggar, by the way. Dude, this fight was fun as fuck. Like, two guys, like, Zach Cummins is 38, Ed Herman is 42, they're both so old, but this fight, dude, and from, by the way, from the first, this, from moment one, by the way, because Zach Cummins walks out to, uh, what is it, it's Chiefs Kingdom, that that celebration they song or some shit they made after we won the Super Bowl or whatever, mm-hmm. and the whole crowd was going crazy, and then... I mean, Casey can't. Casey showed out for for their own man. They really did. That place oh, is yeah. going crazy. You would have thought this is a fucking title fight. The way people were reacting, dude. Um, and it's, especially whenever Ed Herman committed a couple of fouls, you definitely knew, dude. Oh man, <laughs> you heard the people around the arena, man. They were they were fired up. Unforgettable. <laughs> Unforgettable. Rent free in my mind. For real, dude. But it was a lot of fun, dude. It was a hell of a fight. 
and uh, them both retiring afterwards. And, and Zach Cummins was talking about it. He's like, you know, how I didn't want to retire, but, like, this is literally the perfect moment. And he's right. And he's a guy that's been out of action for three years, got to come back and retire in front of his, his people, his people out in, you know, rough and KCMO, okay? You know? And that was awesome. That was fucking sick, dude. So, um, yeah, I mean, as far as the rest of the card goes, dude, I mean, Jillian Roberts is picking up a, a controversial win over Pierre Rodriguez. I thought Pierre Rodriguez, I thought she did the old Brazilian tap, but that's what it's kind of looked like. <laughs> the old Brazilian tap. Oh, man. That Well, I mean, that's what it's called whenever you kind of tap once. And now I know. You know, so uh, that's what it looked like to me. Um, but, you know, regardless, good fake, win. Fake stoppage. <laughs> fake stoppage. But, you know, good good win for Jillian, for uh, our girl Jillian. Um, Daniel Zellhuber defeating Lando Venata. This was a fight that I was definitely hyped for. I was on my feet watching this one. A um, whole lot of fun. Josh <laughs> never sat down during it. Yeah, I was on my feet the whole time, the entire time. Yeah, I mean, the rest of the card goes, man. Uh, Young Kutu Lava defeated her boy Tanner Bozier. This sucked. The Canadian gangster, but he'll be back. He'll be back. Uh, first time at the weight class, he looked shredded. But maybe he's just, you know, he's just got to fine-tune it, maybe. You know, one fight, it happens, got caught. It is what it is. Um... What do you think about Pedro Munoz and Chris Gutierrez? I saw that people were shitting on the Kansas City crowd for not really paying attention to this one. So what do you think? Well, uh, about the crowd or the fight itself? Both. I mean, look, kinda, I mean, we didn't, I mean, we, we didn't really focus on that. Look, I don't care where you're at. I feel like most crowds probably have the same reaction. Unless you're, unless you're in fucking Japan, where the yeah. crowds are super respectful and never boo. Don't even make a noise. You know, you you get the same outcome every time. I'm sorry to say it. Yeah, and it's no offense to Chris Gutierrez or Pedro Munoz. I think that fight was terrible, but it was very, very slow. Yeah, they that's all both, it was. They were both being very technical and being very careful with their shot selection. And I get that. As an athlete, I get that. But as, from a fan point of view, it's like, okay, dude, like, yeah, most, most people would not really. Because round one was competitive, but then round two and three, they didn't really, there wasn't just much activity. So the crowd... Kind of got bored. And there there are some people that were like, you know, that fight was actually really technical, dude. It was actually – and I saw people online saying this. Bro, those people didn't know what the fuck they were watching. Like, there are some MMA fans who, like, you see it whenever there's, like, a fight that was, like, really kind of boring and dull and the crowd booed it and there wasn't much activity. There are some fans that are just like, bro, 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 bro. You just don't know what you're watching, dude. Like, it, some fans would literally – like, a fighter could take a shit in the cage. And, like, some fans would be like, bro, you just don't understand this – the specificity behind it is just, just, you don't understand how technical it is, that shit that he took in the cage, dude. You guys just don't, they just want to seem really educated um, and try to nitpick. They just want to seem more educated. It's kind of it's kind of a weird thing that I've noticed within the sport, but regardless, um, yeah, that fight was not the most entertaining. But, uh, I mean, the crowd definitely had fun during it, I'll put it like that. Brandon Roy Val, we forgot to mention this one. Brandon Roy Val, big winner of Mateus Nickel out by knockout. Afterwards, he said he should not have been on the prelims. I agree. I but agree do you think as well. Do you think he will be getting the title shot next? He said he'll weigh in as a backup again. Yeah. How could words? Uh, title shot? Uh, I mean, I would assume so uh, with the options available at the top and his ability to be very entertaining. I, I don't see why not. Uh, and then Brandon wins uh, his fight against Pantoja, which... I mean, that fight against Patricia obviously has a lot going on the line for it. I mean, that's his Alex Bahia, right? His version of it, in a way. Um, and it even more to – more. there's a little bit more to it, I'd say, in, 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 because of the ways he's lost compared to how Izzy lost. Because for Izzy, it was a, a knockout and a decision that you could have ar- arguably gave to Izzy at the time. But uh, – no, definitely. I think Brandon's right up there. He deserves it. He's one of the guys that at flyweight I've always had a, a lot of love for, and uh, he, he's just much watch TV, you know, like like uh, like the guy sitting in the fucking bathroom, <laughs> Josh, when we were went in there right before the fight. He's like, "Come <laughs> on, guys, Brandon Rebels up next. Must watch TV. Go out there." <laughs> yeah, dude, he is must watch. Um, I thought it was crazy that he was on the prelims. There is no, there is nothing like the disrespect that flyweights get. 
None. I mean, even a women's banter. Like they just they just announced it recently. Raquel uh, Pennington and Irene Aldana will be getting a main event next month. But the fu- even in in that fight, nobody cares about. It. But like Brandon Roy, Val Mateus, Nicolau are like the third fight on a fight night prelim. I don't, like I gotta give him credit though. That's a good fight to make right there. Try to eliminate her. That no, I agree. I agree. I'm just saying more about the way the these disrespect. Because these it's guys should have been on the main card. It's only flyweights that are treated like this, yeah, and it's crazy. No, you're you know right. I mean? You're right. But these guys 100 percent should have been on the on the main card. I know. And then the UFC will complain that they don't have enough contenders, you know, or that nobody's a draw. And it's like, why why are they not a draw? Because you put everybody on the prelims and don't try to promote any of these flyweights. But regardless, um, yeah, I hope he gets the title shot next. He is entertainment personified. But any other closing thoughts on this UFC KC card before we go ahead and uh, move on? Uh, one big thing, I guess, coming out of it that I do want to say is the fact that Dana said he did. They will come back at some point, and that is for us obviously means a lot. Um, you know, it's six years to the day, right, Josh? Is that what it was? It was, yeah. That's a crazy thing about, it. yeah. It was six years to the day. We did not realize. Uh. You know, with everything that's happened in in in, uh, in the sport in our lives, and how much has changed since that day, mm-hmm. uh, it, it just means a lot to hear that. You know, I I am getting a little like deep and maybe a little emotional here about it, but it it's it's just nice to hear that they're gonna come back and hopefully we get another great event. Because to be honest, both events we've been blessed with great guys at the top of the card in Max and Demetrius Johnson, both all time greats in my opinion, some of my favorite fighters of all time to watch. And I hope that whenever they come back, it's it's just as great as this last one was. And I, I don't know, it just it just means it means the world to me. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly it, dude. That's the biggest thing for me personally is the fact that not only have the UFC come here twice, but the UFC's come here twice with one of the greatest fighters of all time and one of my favorite fighters of all time, Dimitri Smiley Johnson. And then they did the same thing with Max Holloway this year, so that was huge. And Dana said afterwards, he's like, you know what, man, this is becoming like a a big, I can't explain it if you don't live in Kansas City because I see people shit. I saw people shit on us whenever the UC announced they're coming here. And anytime I see people just randomly, can't see people get brought up like somehow in the news or on social media, people shit on it. We're becoming like a big city. And let's be honest here, it's all thanks to Patrick Mahomes. We're being completely honest. I mean, that motherfucker got a $500, $500 million contract. He's like, dog, I am investing in everything. Like, he, he owns part of the Royals now. He owns the. I, maybe Sporting KC, I think. He invested in Whataburger, who, which are now coming here. There's, like, another one. Like, By shout way, out. I'm pissed that you missed in Whataburger. It's not fucking in and out. I'll say it right now, dude. <laughs> Whataburger slaps, though, dude. I just went, you know. I'm they they got that Dr. Pepper shake. Come on. God, I'm, I'm so triggered about it, dude. Have you had, have you had in and out uh, Yes, I've had in and out Yeah, I had in and out the one time I went to Texas. And I gotta admit, it was it was better than Whataburger, but it was, it was, it was funny. Look, the fries are ass. There's no arguing that. No, there is no arguing that. That's completely true. Well, but the burger great. It's still good though. It's still good. Uh, regardless though, yeah. And Dane was talking about how this the city's kind of like changing and growing. He's like, you know, I want to come back here, and uh, he said that next time it probably will be St. Louis. So, you know, which I get. whatever. What were you saying? I, I mean, I get that though. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's been a while since they've been there, and, you know. Josh, road trip? No, I'm kidding. No, no. <laughs> Only if I can bring the Glock with me. Um, <laughs> you know me, I, I, they're not going to catch me fucking slipping in St. Louis, man. They're not going <laughs> to We talk about KC having some crime, man. <laughs> I remember uh, the funniest thing, I've, the, the most fun I've ever had is uh, on July 4th, like 2021, I think, I pulled up Snapchat, and I went ahead and went to the Snap map. I went over to St. Louis and I just started clicking. And it was, dude, it was like 15 minutes of people just having like an AK-47 in the side in the sky and just fucking shooting and shit. It was. <laughs> That's godly. <laughs> I'm sure you can find it on fucking YouTube because I'm pretty sure this is probably this is just a normal Friday in St. Louis though. I mean, that, it was, they weren't even doing it because of the holiday. They didn't even know. They thought it was May. So. Think of my idea. Yeah. Right. But anyways. Um, yeah, we got some more UFC this weekend, man. This is actually a packed weekend for combat, but we're going to go ahead and hit it off with the UC Vegas 71. Going down to the UC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada, Dana said that they're leaving the Apex and that they're done always. 
being there, and then they proceeded to have this card out there. They're having the next one after it out there, and they already went out and applied for licenses for four more events over the next month or so. So, kind of lame. But regardless, I do like this main event. I like this card overall. It's a problem, Josh. Come on. It's a I know it is. I know it is. We gotta. They're just taking their time to get on out there, you know. Um, I mean, it's not you know every other sport they're doing the same. You know, the NBA they still do half their fans, half the games without fans. You know. <laughs> Um, re- regardless, dude. Yeah, we got a big main event, Sergey Pavlovich, who's won his last six fights by knockout in the first round, taking on Curtis Razor Blades, riding a three-fight winning streak. Man, Curtis has said that he thinks he could be the one to take down John Jones. He believes that he has the ability, he has the style, but he has to get through a big Russian uh, in order to go ahead and get to that fight, man. Do you think he'll be able to get it done? Very excited for this one. Big matchup on Saturday. God, I mean, this is Curtis's time, right? He's been wanting this moment. I thought uh, that his time was never going to come at Francis State Champion because he had two losses against him. He had a loss in the middle there against Derek. And he he started getting some wins in the middle of that, obviously, and and before that. So I thought that he would get at at some point close, but it was going to be very drawn out and maybe a a little later in their career. Uh, Luckily, things have just worked out very well where Francis is no longer in the UFC. John Jones is now a heavyweight. (laughs) And Curtis, and Curtis is, is won his last few fights. So, fuck, dude. <laughs> Talk about a perfect outcome. Uh, God, man. I mean, he, he has a tough one in front of him in Sergey Pavlovich, who is now being coined a white Ngannou, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we you guys have a white Ngannou. Yeah, Russia, you have a Francis Ngannou. <laughs> But he's – you give credit to Sergey Pavlovich, man. He has killed it in his return. I mean, he's been – Putting guys out left and right, no decisions, all finishes early on. Um, I don't think Curtis will be that easy to take out, though. Even though in, uh, Curtis has had some uh, hard times with a few punchers in his in his time, you know, Francis twice, Derek once right ran into the Francis fight, which stopped because of was it his eye that swelled up real bad? It's been quite a I while. Think so though. something like that. Yeah, Doctor Stoppage. So. Well, I think with his wrestling capability, the fact that he has improved striking, I think uh, it's time for Curtis Blades to, to uh, make this moment his. Uh, it's very clear the direction that the UFC has been trying to go with the heavyweight division, right? Because of uh, how I think, and granted, credit to Sergey for being active and fighting and and clearly wanting to get back in the mix as soon as he could. Uh, but I mean, this is this is a must win for Curtis. There's there's no going back, and. Uh, if he does lose this, I think it'll be quite some time again before the title is available. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if Curtis Blades loses this one, well, actually, I don't think that's actually fair to say because I think right now in the heavyweight division, there's so much uncertainty. I mean, John Jones just won the title, and, and uh, Dana said that they're looking at him versus Stipe at MSG, not in July. So I don't even know when that fight would take place. Um, and John said that he may retire. If he after he beats Stipe, and we don't even know if he will beat Stipe, and Stipe, God knows the way he the way he fights, it's like I don't know, you're fucking better off trying to imagine, bring Jimmy Hoffa back from the dead, trying to find that motherfucker, get him in the cage, man. Like imagine Stipe wins, Josh, and we have to wait a year and a half for fucking Stipe to fight John again in our rematch. Dude, I would literally if Stipe wins the title, I might lose my fucking mind because I was really hoping when, whenever John John fought, I was like, okay, if John wins. He's going to be really inactive, but, like, got to wait and see how it turns out, you know? Like, I don't know. Because John's weird. Because sometimes there's there's spurts where John will fight, like, three or four times a year, and then he'll pop, like, three times for drugs and then an arrest. And you know what I mean? Like, you know the cycle. So, but with Stipe, it's like we know if he, like, he's just not going to be around much because he's literally a firefighter and so on and so forth. So, I, I you know, is what it is. But yeah, at least in heavyweight, I think that it's not entirely fair to say if Curtis loses, he'll be locked out forever, but it would be bad. I don't think he'll be locked out forever. I think he'll just be quite a while. Yeah, it would be a minute. Uh, as far as this fight goes, man, it's uh, this is a weird style. Of, I mean, look, this one is very, I have no idea, pretty much. Because that's always the case with heavyweights, but with these particular heavyweights, man. Because Sergey Pavlovich is a big guy, hits very, very hard, we know that. And the one loss in his UC career is to Alistair Overeem, who essentially just survived an early storm, took him down, and mauled him on the ground. 
And if that's Alistair Overing doing that to you, imagine what Curtis Blades would do. The issue is, is can Curtis Blades survive on the feet? Can he get him down? And, I mean, obviously, even then, that Overing fight happened like four years ago, so a lot changes since then. Angel, what do you think about this one, man, in terms of uh, stylistically? Do you think Curtis Blades would be able to get the job done and uh, move one step closer to finally getting a UFC title shot? I think he can, man. Uh, it's it's very up in the air. I think it's pick him fight. I think with the power he's seen out of Sergey and what he's done recently, I mean, he's very capable of ending the fight at any moment. But like I tell you, with Curtis's improved striking and, and the rest of the capabilities he has, I think he should be able to, on paper, give a lot of trouble and potentially win this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel, man. I think I think I'm gonna go ahead and take. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna take Sergey Pavlovich. Oh I'm, man, really? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna you, take. You, I'm gonna take I, White I, and Donald. I, I finally picked Curtis, and I think I picked against Curtis a lot. And you, you always pick against Curtis. I always pick Curtis. That's why it's funny. God, now, now I'm just gonna get fucked. This is what always happens, dude. I always go against someone, and now I'm gonna get fucking <laughs> obliterated. <laughs> well, you're going against White and Ghanu, dude. Of course, it's gonna get obliterated. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm 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 bone, dude. This, this this is literally about it. Hopefully, hopefully this is the one time where I finally pick someone after not picking them for a long time, and it actually works out in my favor. Right. Um. You know, jokes aside, man. I I mean, I I don't even know, man. I'm I went back and forth on this one a lot. I mean, this is ultimately about as fifty fifty as it gets because I think if Curtis goes out there and gets one takedown, it's over. I think if Sergey lands one big right hand, it's over. That's literally about as simple as it gets. But I'm gonna. I think Sergey's gonna land it. I think he will. Um, and I'm gonna pick him to get the win. And I don't even like that because I'm a, I'm a big I'm a big Curtis guy. I've been I've been very heavy on the fact that I think if Curtis Blades can get to the title, if he can just get there, he'll probably win it. You know what I mean? It's just he keeps on. He he. There are guys that will just stand up and fight whoever the UFC tells them, and there are guys that won't. And Curtis Blades. Sadly, is a guy that will do the first thing. He's going to stand up and fight whoever the UFC offers to him. And I honestly, as a Curtis Blades fan, I wish he'd be way more careful with his selection. Like he just, some guys just don't give a fuck, and um, he's one of those guys. But regardless, man, I think top to bottom, this card is actually pretty fun, man. Co-main event, we got Brad Savaras coming off a loss to Drikas Duplessis. Back in July. Prior to that, he was riding a two-fight winning streak. He's an OG, only 35 years old, but has been around in the game. Been in the UFC for over a decade, going on 13 years. Taking on Bruno Silva, 33-year-old Brazilian, riding a two-fight losing streak. Prior to that, he did have a really nice winning streak, though. And those two losses, Gerald Mearshart, Alex Bahia, nothing to shake your head at. So what do you think about this matchup, man? I, I kind of have the same feeling. I think it's a pick em fight. I feel like they're kind of guys who I think are both at similar levels. Credit to Brad Tavares, though, was always kind of around the rankings for a while and then kind of held his position. And it's, I'd say still kind of just barely outside of the rankings. And uh, for a while, they kind of had a little bit of trouble. But then it finally got a, a win or two in there. And then uh, in his last – one of his last fights was against Drikas, man. And I thought he looked, I mean, relatively well. Granted, like I said, dude, Drikas is gases all the time. So – I wasn't surprised when it did happen, and Brad almost got a. Uh, I, I would advise people to rewatch that fight because Brad had his moments in there against Drikas, and to me that really showed that like, okay, Drikas still has stuff to work on. But granted, though, Josh, he was only receiving eight percent of what, or I forgot what it was, but something about oxygen or whatever. You saw it on Twitter, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. But regardless, I, I think Brad Tavares will get it. I think Silva is has a lot of potential. Um, like I said, I think it's a pick and fight. It's as close as you can get. Um, but I'm gonna go with the guy who's been in the rankings before and, uh, had a, a split decision against a guy who's now potentially in the run for a title shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same here. I think that, um, I think Brad Spar is a more accomplished guy. I think lost to Drikas is nothing. I mean, it happens. A lot of guys are losing to that guy right now, so. I still think he's a solid guy. I think he's a great gatekeeper in this 185-pound division, and I think he's going to go ahead and pick up a win on Saturday. I like Bruno Silva, but I've never been impressed with him as, like, a, a tech. Like, I think I think he's a fun guy. I've never looked at Bruno Silva and thought, okay, yeah, this guy's contender. Championship gonna, material. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen um, anytime soon. But I, I think it'll be a fun fight, so we'll see what happens, man. The rest of the card, there's some big ones, man. Uh, which fights are you most looking forward to? 
I think we have to highlight the fight right under, dude. Uh, a fun, I think, very much a boxing-like style matchup. Bobby Green and Jared Gordon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's a like perfect matchmaking right there, right? Yeah, it absolutely is, dude. I mean, that is perfect matchmaking. Bobby Green, one of the most entertaining guys of the game. King Bobby Green. You know, he said he was going to retire after this fight, Angel. Again? Yeah, and then he clarified. He said, yeah, I'm probably just going to go buy a different name. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I, think that, I mean, man. I don't... <laughs> it's just... So he's not going to do it. I guess he's just like a fucking te- Tekken character or something. He just changing the name, you know. Just... <laughs> so I don't know what he'll come to next time, but he'll probably retire after that too. But uh, it should be a fun fight, though. It should be a very fun fight with Jared Gordon, obviously, who has been out of action since that close decision loss to Patty Pimblett. And afterwards, you know, both guys said that they want that rematch. So we'll go ahead and see if he can actually go ahead and win this one and potentially get that Patty fight. Uh, once again, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, as far as the rest of the card goes, man, Ricky Glenn, Chris Diosiago should be fun, Jeremiah Wells, Matthew Smeltzberger, Ronnie Yaya, the, the ageless wonder coming back, man, 38 years old, riding a 2-5 winning streak, man, we'll see what happens, I want to see, I, we were hoping that fight with Cody could get rebooked, it didn't, um, and Angel, we talk about the women's featherweight division, we have, we have a women's featherweight fight coming up. Norma Dumont versus Kale Rosa. So I'm sure you're, you're – what are your thoughts on that one? I'm sure you're very excited. That's probably what, a women's 145 contender fight? One number one contender? No, oh, come on, Josh. Is it? <laughs> probably. I mean, there's only about – there's three women, so I guess there's got to – one of them's got to be a number one contender, right? You know? You're, you're not wrong about that. Yeah, yeah I, I will say this right now, kind of looking at the whole thing. Josh, we got three former tough alumni here. On this card, Muhammad Usman, Brady Highstand, and uh, Broken Walker getting the call up from the regional scene mm-hmm. uh, after her. Actually, no, she fought Juliana Miller. I forgot they fought on. I thought for some reason I thought she she had a fight scheduled for Invicta though. I'm pretty sure. Or I thought she did. Never mind. Regardless, Broken Walker once again back. Uh, Muhammad Usman taking on a Junior Taffa, brother of Justin Taffa, making his UFC debut. After coming off his big win in Ryzen. Uh, and Brady Highstand opening up the card, which that should be fun. I think Brady Highstand's a must see TV. I think he's one of those guys that I think will always be entertaining. I thought all his fights on Tough were fun. Uh, his fight against Ricky is uh, one of my favorite tough fights, at, at least that we've had in recent time. Probably a tough finale fight to that. Uh, banger, banger of a fight. Obviously not the most technical matchup, I'd say. But it was really fun to watch. I agree. I agree. And it should be a lot of fun. And ultimately, dude, this card is uh, looking top to bottom. It's not – when you look at most Apex cards, dude, this, they're not as good as this one. I'm most excited – I mean, you mentioned a lot of guys there. Very excited for Muhammad Usman, man. I think he's a guy that – he's been out of action for a long time. And ultimately, I mean, that whenever he even won tough, it wasn't the most impressive win, but he got it done. And – uh He's a guy that, like his brother, he has the physical talent. It's can he put it together. And obviously he's much older, I believe, is what, in his 30s now. We'll see what happens, man. That fight against Papa should be a lot of fun, and uh, we'll see what happens. But, dude, there's a lot of fighting this weekend, Angel. Um, not only in boxing, but in MMA. Belts are 294 and 295 going down. From Hawaii, you know, Angel didn't mention it, but Dana afterwards, when it, somebody asked me at UC Kansas City press conference, will we be heading to Hawaii? Because Max Holloway always says that he wants to go to Hawaii. Dana said no. He said they just couldn't make it happen, which is why Bellator is going there for two two cards. Not just one, but two this weekend. So, uh, yeah, that's just wonderful. But anyways, man, uh, Bell 294, obviously the weaker of the two cards, but... In the main event, Liz Carmouche, Deanna Bennett, Tim Johnson, Syed Salma, and the co-main event, and obviously a couple of other solid names down the uh, down in the undercard. Man, what do you think about this first card going down on Friday? Look, it's it's not going to be better than than the card on Saturday. I, I think there's no competition, obviously with more names and also young and upcoming talent on that undercard for the Bellator 295. I, I don't think there's much competition. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's um, 
it's not much competition, honestly. But as far as like the main event goes with this one, what do you think, man? Liz Carmouche, obviously, this is going to be her second title defense. Obviously, she beat Juliana Velasquez via a controversial TKO to win the title, then defeated her in the rematch by submission. Deanna Bennett, 38 years old, former Invicta veteran who is in there around for a long time, man. She was an Invicta almost from its formation all the way up until 2020 whenever she went ahead and got signed by Bellator and lost to Liz Carmouche in her debut. So now they're running it back. I'm assuming I'm picking Liz Carmouche to get it done. I'm assuming you're on the same page. I am. I mean, they already fought once. She finished her. I mean, you never know. Things could change. I mean, crazy things have happened, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I I think it'll be a fun one. I'm happy that Deanna Ben's getting the shot. She's been somebody who's been around for a long time. So happy for her. Uh, co-main event. I mean, Tim Johnson needs to win bad, man. I mean, he's a guy they, that... Uh, both these guys need to win bad. Yeah, Saeed Salma. I mean, two losses in a row. And even then, before that, his his biggest win was a broken finger injury over Vitaly Minikov. Um, what do you think about this one, man? I mean, I, I'm, if I had to pick, and I don't want to, but if I had to pick, I'd pick Tim Johnson. I just think he's the uh, the more established guy here. I mean, I, I it's, it's a pick of man. Both guys are having a little bit of a rough run. One guy has a little bit more experience. One guy is a little – has less experience, but – Got to win over a guy who's hurt. So, I mean, like it's – you're throwing darts in the blind, Josh. I mean, I, I'll go Tim Johnson as well. Yeah, same here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a good way to put it. But, I mean, the rest of the card, man, I mean, Arlene Blenko, Sarah McMahon should be fun. Danny Sabatello, the Italian gangster. Happy to see him back. Let's go, um, champ. Let's go, champ. Yeah, Tyrell Fortune on the – He got the robbed, team. Josh. No, I was kidding. Could you imagine? He got, he got robbed. You know he won that fucking fight. You know, um, but, uh, yeah, so this should be a fun card, but I'm way more excited for Bellator 295, man. Roof on Stotts, Rufion on Stotts taking on Patchy Mix is about as good as it gets. I mean, Rufion on Stotts, obviously, you know, you know the record. 19 and 1. Stellar. Multiple wins. Interim bantamweight champion. Beating guys like Danny Sabatello, which we just said. Juan Archuleta, Magomed, Magomedov. Tons of great wins on his record. Only loss is to UFC Bantamweight contender Moral Dwalashvili from back in 2017. Taking on Patchy Mix, another another guy, stellar record, 17 and one. Only loss was to Moana Charletta when he fought for the vacant title back in 2020. He's gotten some big wins. Submitted Magomed Magomedov and defeated Koji Horiguchi. He has leveled up over the last couple of years. 29 years old, hitting his prime. Angel, what do you think, man? Winner of this. They get the Millie. They get the Bantamweight gold. And they'll fight the winner of Sergio Pettis versus Patricio Pitbull later this year, man. What do you think? Fuck, dude. I mean, I'm exciting as fuck. I mean, one of the best fights right now outside of the UFC, I'd say. Uh, one of the best matchups you can have outside of the UFC. Two of the best fighters outside of the UFC right now. Uh, this, if this doesn't go to show that there's talent outside of the UFC, I don't know what will, man. Uh, I think... This fight's going to be a banger. Uh, you got two extremely young, talented guys. You have a guy who's peaking. I think both of them are kind of peaking at the same time right now, right? I mean, yeah. Stotts, Stotts is right now, uh, and uh, so is a uh, mix. Uh, and it's perfect. It's the perfect time for these guys to fight because I don't think you'll ever get – these guys are going to fight the best versions of themselves that they possibly could at this time. I want to gen- I genuinely believe that statement. I know that's – Putting a lot of pressure on them, right? Saying that right now this is the best version of themselves. And, and look, I'm, I'm, I could be incorrect in that, but I, I want to believe it is. And, uh, but fuck, man, I think Stotts gonna have a rough night. I'm gonna go mix. I just, I think, I think Stotts is just gonna have too much trouble on the ground. I know, I know he can wrestle. I know what he can do. He's resilient. He's tough. But we saw that he did get controlled on, at times on the ground against a, a guy like Sabatella. The thing is, that control when it's mixed, and it's in, instead of uh, stop it all the ground, they're going to be submissions and ground and pound. Yeah, and that's the big thing for me, and that's why I'm also going patchy mix. I think the only reason why Danny Sabatello did, is not walking around with the Bellator title on his shoulder right now is just a lack of activity. And I know that patchy mix is not going to let that happen to him, dude. I think on the ground he's going to be active. I think he's going to be moving. I think he's going to be changing position. 
And I think he's going to be working. And I think Rufon Stoss, man, he has to keep it on the feet, but I don't think he'll be able to, at least for five rounds. I think that he'll have success. I think it's going to be times where he'll land big shots. Maybe he'll put him in some trouble. But I think for five rounds, I just don't think he'll be he'll be able to keep Patchy Mix off of him. So I'm going to go ahead and take Patchy Mix to get the win and become Bellator interim bantamweight champion. And, uh, dude, I mean, this is a... Uh, you know, I'm kind of the, the tournament's coming to an end, but I'm kind of glad that they did that that uh, Pettis versus Pitbull booking because now it's kind of like it's kind of feels like a semifinal of sorts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It feels like the tournament's not even ending. So, You're not even uh, wrong. So that's pretty fun. You know, in the co-main event, Lee Malay McFarlane returning home to Hawaii. I believe this is going to be her last fight, um, if I remember correctly. Um, she's dealt with some neck issues. She's 33 now. Fought a lot in this Bellator cage. One of their kind of one of the kind of their OG, I guess, women veterans. Ever since their women's flyweight division started, she was their first ever champion and uh, got some big wins. Taking on Kana Watsonby, former. I mean, fought a lot in Deep Jewels. Fought a lot in uh, Japan. Obviously, came to Bellator back in 2019. Picked up a couple of wins. Lost to Liz Carmouche by TKO. Her only career loss. What do you think about this one, man? Oh man, I mean, it, I think a lot of it just depends how highly you rate Kana Watson. Be I feel like um, when she had her first loss in Bellator, you kind of were like, "Damn, that's a bit rough." I I don't know if the record is necessarily reflective of how good her skill set might be, you know. Uh, and, and granted, it, it, now looking back at it, well, it's, it's it was against the champ, it's, you know, titles in the first round, a lot of factors to it. And she's come back, you know, one, one fight after that, and it looked good, and the two getting a finish, but had troubles in that fight too early on, if I remember right. Obviously, uh, Lima Lay kind of uh, had some stuff going on there for a bit, came back, got a nice dub as well. Um, I'm going to go with Lima Lay in this one, Josh. I think she's going to get it done in Hawaii. Perfect setting. What else could you want? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think this fight, like you said, it comes down to how highly you rate Kana Watanabe. Um, I think she's going to get it done. I mean, I don't think Kana wants to be that much better than Alima Lay McFarlane, but I think Alima Lay, she has had some rough years, um, and a lot it has not been very highly publicized. She's had a lot of injuries. I know that she, whenever she lost the title to Juliana Velasquez, she missed over two years due to knee issues. And then in that fight, she hurt her neck really badly, and then she's like, all right, I'm only going to have two more fights, and then I'm going to go and call it quits. Um she lost to Justine Kish, who that was that was whenever that knee, that uh, neck injury happened. She barely edged out Bruna Ellen. Um, I just think Conor Watsonby is uh, closer to front right now. I think she's healthy. I think she's gonna go ahead and get it done. I think Lee Lane Far. There's just too many question marks uh, for me to go ahead and, and pick her at least in this matchup. So yeah, I'm gonna take Conor Watsonby to go ahead and get it done. I mean, the rest of the card, man. I mean, Aaron Pico is back, obviously for the first time since his fucking horrific shoulder injury. I think it's Jeremy Kennedy. We'll see how he responds. A lot of guys, you know, in the moment, everybody's like, oh, God, that's just, that's terrible. You know, it just looks like a bad injury, but I mean, shoulder, shoulder stuff is really bad, man, so I'm very interested to see how he responds. Koji Horiguchi, Ray Borg, is a low-key banger opening up this card. I mean, I'm very excited for that one, man. Um, throughout All throughout the card, man. Which fight you're most looking forward to that we have not discussed? Well, I mean, you already highlighted it, but obviously I'll go over that one as well. Obviously the other one you mentioned as well, <laughs> which are like much watch TV. Uh, Matt yeah. Brunel back against Justin Gonzalez. Kai Kamaka always exciting as well. Uh, Davion Franklin, obviously heavyweight. Who doesn't love that? Uh, those are probably say my main ones. And then uh, Sumiko Inaba versus Vete Ortega. Another banger there. Um, I'd say those are my main ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a fun card. Um, a couple of good names on there. Not the deepest, but I do think that 295. If you had to have a card to watch this weekend, 295, and that includes UFC for the record. I think if you have a, you only got time to watch one thing this weekend, Bellator 295 might be that card. So uh, it is very good. Um, as far as uh, the rest of the weekend, dude. I mean, we got other stuff to talk about though. We have a lot of boxing. To A, go over and also talk about uh, Ryan Garcia, Gervonta Davis. We know the story, and we know it's going down April 22nd 
from Las Vegas from the T-Mobile Arena. Oh, my goodness, dude. We're finally getting it. One of the biggest boxing matches in years. In terms of the two stars involved, in terms of the competitiveness of the matchup, we've been really hoping that some of these young, lightweight stars would all step up and fight. These two are. You know, they even said they're going to bet their purse, you know, which is apparently the fun thing to do now. Um, I'm sure they actually fucking won't, but, you know, well, they'll talk about it. Uh, but as far as the fight it goes, itself goes, man, very exciting. What do you think about it? I mean, finally, man, we get these young guys who, uh, for a long time, I feel like boxing was kind of in a state of, like, these these guys were on the come up, didn't want to fight each other. We're kind of drawing it out. And finally, we get these two individuals who come came to agreement somehow. Obviously, Ryan took a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, implications in the fight contract to make this fight happen. And uh, you got to give him credit. Like people are, uh, like people are saying he he gave up a lot. He's giving, uh, he's doing all these things to make this fight possible. So you got to give a lot of credit to Ryan. I would say to tank as well, who obviously is taking this, uh, wants to take this opportunity to make this big fight, make some big money. I wonder how these guys are going to do on pay-per-view, man. I think that's a big, big question mark for me. I'm sure they're going to do good. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to give a number. I just, I, I don't know. Uh, regardless, though, this is. I think this could. They're going to do three million angels. <laughs> you think so? I think this is the boxing match of the year, though. Uh, Jokes I, aside, I think it's up there. Yeah. It, it will be up there. I mean, uh, Haney Lomachenko will also be up there. But I think with everything that's on the line for these young guys and going forward and the bragging rights, especially in this weight class, I mean, it, this is going to carry some weight throughout time. And obviously, potentially another title defense for Devontae or a capture or a title capturing moment for Ryan. Actually, there's no title on the line for this, right? Because um, going, it, there's no title on the line because it's a catch weight. I was gonna say they did a fucking catch weight, which 300 IQ by fucking Gervonta, right? Right. Makes you wonder why he didn't want to do it though. But look, we're not we're not you know, we're not gonna go there. Regardless, we're getting it. It's time. Twelve rounds, three minutes. Uh. I'm going to let you take a little bit of the lead on this one, Josh. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little overwhelmed right now with excitement. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, man. I'm I'm pretty psyched for it. I think uh, this fight, it's very – and by the way, you went ahead and asked why it's kind of not on the line. Um, Ryan moved up to uh, super lightweight back in um, – what is it? It was last year, I think. And he pretty much went ahead and, like, from my understanding, it's either catch weight or they're going to do it up just a whole other weight class. So this is just the closest down to Gervonta's weight. So that's essentially why. But as far as the fight itself goes, I'm fucking psyched, man. I think this one, you know, everybody's predicting these crazy outcomes. I honestly think these two are probably just evenly matched. Uh, I think the fight's going to be very competitive, which nobody seems to think. I've seen people who are like, oh, Ryan's going to starch him, the speed will be too much, or Javante's just going to go out there and, and, you know, beat up the, the TikToker, the YouTuber, you know, like everybody likes to shit on Ryan for. Um, I think this fight's going to be very competitive. I think early on the speed is going to be very big for Javante. Because these guys are both fast as fuck, but I think Ryan, Ryan Garcia is one of the fastest guys in the sport right now. And you can see that any time, whether he's hitting pads, whether he's in the ring. I mean, you guys, you see some guys hit the pads, they'll hit the bag, and they'll look absurdly fast. Ryan is the only guy that I see that carries that speed over to the ring. Like, there will be times where he'll fucking hit a guy and you won't even see the punch. Like, you have to slow down the punch to fucking see what, what landed. Um, and I think early on, that's going to go ahead and pose a lot of issues for Gervonta. But I think over the course of the fight, I think Gervonta, I think the story of the fight is probably going to be Gervonta getting in close. And I think he's going to make it a rough and dirty fight. I think he's going to end up probably getting the win by a close decision. That's my official prediction. It's a Gervonta decision. But I can see Ryan Garcia pulling this out. I think he's a very live dog. He's a – if you're looking for an underdog, man, he's he, the, the odds are only getting wider for some reason. I thought they would close, uh, but I've been paying attention to the line over the last few weeks. Javante Davis being a bigger and bigger favorite, man. But uh, I can see Ryan pulling it out, but my official prediction, Javante Davis by decision. What do you think, man? Obviously, I know that you've kind of been deep – you've been kind of big on Ryan for a long time, so I, obviously a bit different. But what do you think, man? I mean, look, I've followed his career for some time now. I mean, he, uh, I remember I was sitting at a Buffalo Wild Wings. And one of his, no, I kid you not, like, actually, oh, I was okay, sitting at a okay. Buffalo Wild Wings. Like, not even a joke. I was actually sitting okay, at okay, a Buffalo okay. Wild Wings. 
and on the TV, there's a, a free fight uh, going on. There's some boxing going on. I'm like, oh, you know, I, was, I wonder what's going on. And boom, Ryan Garcia walks out. I was like, oh shit, okay, who's, who's this kid? You know, and uh, fight goes, you know, fight starts going, and I'm like, oh shit, okay, I'm I'm interested. And ever since then, I've kept an eye on him just throughout time. I think it was the Fernando Vargas fight. Um, uh, back in the day, I mean, the fight lasted one round, literally, and he got the win. And I was just like, I wonder why this is on TV. I wonder why he has such a big, like, a lot of people there. And and yeah, I've always kept an eye on him. And uh, now he's here. And then he, you know, he went on to train with Canelo. A little bit of controversy there, this and that. Mm-hmm. Beat Luke Campbell, this, this and that. Regardless, we're here. Um, fuck, dude. It's crazy. I mean, I, I thought this fight was never going to happen. I thought it was going to take an eternity for it to happen, if I'm being honest. But and it did. And, and it, <laughs> did, it did it away. It did it away. Yeah, yeah. Definitely took a while. But but we're here now, so it doesn't matter. You know? It doesn't matter because we're here now. I mean, look, you laid out a lot of this, kind of the points I wanted to make, too. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the same boat as you. I think Trevante will probably get it done. I think regardless, though, I think Ryan will make a good account of himself. I just want to see if he can... Two things that others guys haven't done is avoid Gervonta closing the space, you know, because he's a small guy. No matter what, he has to come in to hit you, you know. Mm-hmm. He, he has you will eternally have that advantage. Is whether or not can you keep can you make that advantage yours and actually use it. Um, I want to see if Brian can establish a good jab, make it very hard. Like if if you take starts walking at bam, jab down in the middle, can slow him down, get him thinking. Okay, fuck, jab hit me, it fucking pops back, head, head bops back, whatever, right. You know, slow the momentum down and, and avoid any any short exchanges. And and I'm curious to see if he could draw out the fight, you know, if he can make it go to distance. Because he, I mean, he has the speed, he has the power to get him out of there. But I, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be, if that's necessarily the, the true game plan for Ryan to, to win this boxing match. But I mean, if the opportunity's there, I'm sure he'll take it. I, I I don't know. I just hope it's not a blowout on either side. I hope it's it's competitive, it's drawn out. We get to see a lot of their skill sets and see a lot of things that need to be tested on each side. Yeah, and ultimately, that's what I think is going to happen. <clears throat> I know that everybody seems to ever, ever say yeah, everybody. Most predictions I've seen is just, you know, Javon is going to fuck that boy up or just, you know, because these guys have such big fan bases. But I think it's going to be a very competitive fight, and I can see it going either way. But, um, you know, you mentioned pay-per-view, Angel. I want you – I'm going to I'm gonna get I'm – not, I'm not going to ask you specifics. I'm just going to ask, over or under 500,000? The 500,000 does not sound like a lot. But just for in case you're curious, I believe Gervonta versus Hector Luis Garcia did around. I can really just find the actual number actually, but I know that it did around two hundred thousand, less than that. Mm-hmm. The uh, I don't I can't find the numbers for that. It was two twenty. That was uh, Gervonta Davis's last fight. It was two twenty. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go five fifty. I think that's fair. I think it's. I'm I, seeing some people putting crazy numbers out there. That's not going to happen. Okay, I'll, I'll, on the low end, 450. On the high end, 650. Yeah, that's about where I'm at. And, yeah. prob- and probably somewhere in between. Mm-hmm. Likely. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is going to be a... Uh, I mean, I'm gonna probably going to go... That's still a lot of money, though, bro. It's a lot of money. I think low end, like the lowest end, is probably 400. The high end is probably 750. I don't think this fight, I'm seeing some people saying a million, 1.5, 1.2, that's not going to happen. I mean, I'd be shocked. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll, I mean, both, uh, both these guys have we'll big see. fan bases and a lot of young people who enjoy watching. They do, but they've not, they do, but they haven't proven that they can sell pay-per-views. That's kind of the difference. Like, there'd be guys with, like, big fan, for example, Colby Covington, I, we talk about him as, like, a draw, and we've talked about his drawing power a lot, like, over the last couple of weeks, because he's getting a title shot or whatever. Um, he's a guy that has a big fan base, but people don't buy pay-per-views to see him. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I think we're only we're honestly going to learn here with these type of fan bases that I, I, I think they will. I think they will get buys. I think I think then I think no matter what I look if it's good or bad the number will be surprising. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good way to put it. But uh, anyways, man, yeah. As far as the rest of well, I mean not the rest of the card because I really don't think there's any who's even the Comey event. It's somebody that I know that I can't think of. 
David uh, Morrell is in the co-main event spot. And Gabriel Rosado is also on the card. So this is a pretty soft. There's some fun names on here. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, man. I mean, it should be. That's, that's the biggest thing happening this weekend. But there is still other, like, things going on in the boxing world. Um, Kingpin and Misfits are both having shows. I mean, we'll talk about Kingpin first because it's their quarterfinal matchups for their Grand Prix. Eight fighters, eight YouTubers, eight influencers all competing. Um, And obviously on Saturday, Kingpin, it's going to be their first ever show. So I think a lot, I mean, it's not their first ever show, I believe, but uh, they've not had one of this magnitude. So, yeah, man, I mean, kind of give me your thoughts on this one. All the – everybody's competing. I mean, we got Gibb versus McBroom, the rematch. My mate, Nate, versus King Kenny. Jarvis versus Tom Zanetti. Winters and Nunez versus a guy I don't know. So, there you go. What do you think? I know. I mean, it's it's honestly for YouTubers, it's a stacked little card, you know, with the people they have on there, especially people who now have had a few bouts. I read the name, and obviously, like I told you in the pre-show, uh, fucking – Tournament format for anything in combat is fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. So I'm a big fan. And it's nice to see the, the ladies get their highlight and same with the guys, you know? There, I, that's actually something awesome that I just realized that there's a fair bit of uh, gal fights and a fair, and obviously, no surprise, the majority are the men's fights. But uh, I think that's awesome. And our boy, you forgot, Josh, Jonathan Porter, a.k.a. Blueface, oh, on the card, man. too. We haven't seen since his... Uh, well, it wasn't really BKFC because it was just boxing fight on BKFC. Yeah, Blueface. Blueface has had like seven scheduled fights all fall apart, dude. I mean, you're just, that guy is a fucking menace. If you're talking, he's just. I, I feel like every there was like four straight events where it was like Blueface is fighting this guy and just wouldn't happen. You know, <laughs> right? Um. So, yeah, I forgot about that. But, yeah, I mean, I think that's, like, for YouTube boxing people, this is a fun little card, man. I mean, you got some big names. I, I'm not going to make predictions for any of these fights. I mean, I think it'll be fun. Um, I think... So, I think, Josh, the very more, question is, does Anderson give the Austin McGroom again? I think I think he does, and I think that's going to be really funny. So that's kind of why I'm into this fight. <laughs> Because I, I thought it, whenever they announced or whenever they did the drawing selection and uh, those two got each other, I remember thinking at the time, I remember thinking, like, God, like, this is by far the funniest fucking outcome. And so then I thought, trolly. it's so trolly. But then I thought, oh, no, the way funnier outcome is if they both get each other and then and then Gib knocks them out again. <laughs> what if Austin wins, dude? Our first YouTuber influencer boxing trilogy oh my god i didn't think about that yeah that'd be fucking sick dude could you imagine and then co-main on misfits of his own boxing dude with jake paul and ksi in the main event could you imagine that and they're out in wembley stadium in right. front of ninety thousand fans i sold out stadium <laughs> <laughs> sold out wembley stadium i'm <laughs> I knocked out. <laughs> I knocked out George Groves in front of <laughs> ninety thousand fans in Wembley. <laughs> Fucking do the crawl approach, man. But anyways, um, yeah. I mean, this Kingpin card, it's fun. I'm happy with the ladies that they're getting their own tournament too. Um, and we'll see how that one goes. And uh, yeah, man. I think I think what's your most excited fight? I think that's a better question of all these matchups happening. Oh man, fuck. Let me think. Give me a sec. I probably, I honestly Jarvis. I'm just excited to see Jarvis again. He he kind of left us wanting more, and we had to wait so long. And I'm curious to see how how it's been after almost a two year layoff. But he's still been training. I know he's been proactive in that sense. And we've seen uh, everybody's seen the fucking Floyd sparring footage. Uh, yeah. No, I'm curious to see how he does against Tom Zanetti, who kind of came out of nowhere but had a fun and entertaining matchup against Slim. And it's only been three months since that, so I'm curious to see how a little turnaround goes for him, how his conditioning is, and I'm curious to see what Jarvis brings to the table. Mm-hmm. Same, yeah. I'm very interested to see how Jarvis responds. Um, is but yeah, I mean overall it's a solid card. I'm personally my most excited fight is Gibby McBroom. I'm very excited about that rematch. I think it'd be really fucking funny if uh, 
if Gibb wins again. And so for that, I'm kind of hoping it happens. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I think all these fights could be fun. But there's another YouTube boxing match or YouTube boxing card going down. Uh, it's Misfits. Misfits 006, I believe. JMX versus Le'Veon Bell. Uh, wow. Dude, I mean, this is an interesting matchup, man. Le'Veon Bell obviously knocked out Adrian Peterson in an exhibition. Lost to Uriah Hall in his pro debut on the undercard of Jay Paul versus Anderson Silva. And taking on uh, JMX here, who has some experience in the YouTube boxing scene. That's like KSI said the winner of this fight should fight Logan Paul. So what do you think about that? And uh, what do you think about this main event, man? I mean, it's fun. I think it's a big opportunity for JMX. He has four bouts under his name. Uh, been a little bit since we saw him. He's continuing to grow. We've seen some improvements. Um, I didn't. I didn't expect to see Le'Veon Bell and Misfits, but I mean, obviously the it was possible as a rat that could, could have been taken, and obviously it has been. He's thirty one, so he's young. He has a lot of time to get better, and obviously him being a professional athlete, uh, I mean, from football to this, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he'll take it seriously. He'll be extremely disciplined, and he has a attention to him, and he, he can draw people out to come out and watch events. So I think it's a it's a perfect match made here with him coming to Misfits. I agree. I think it is a it's it's a perfect match, and I think this fight's very very interesting. I don't know how it'll go. I think Le'Veon Bell has been one of the more interesting guys to kind of emerge in influencing bo- and influencer boxing because he's got so much. You know, he has so much athleticism, and he's such an interesting guy from the standpoint of he's a professional athlete, and you don't get too many professional athletes actually involved in this thing. Um, so from that metric, I'm very excited to see. As far as the rest of the card goes, man, which fights are you most looking forward to? There's some interesting names on here. Chris Avila, Paul Bamba, you know, they're going to be on here. Wally Sharks, Kimbo Slice Jr. is going to be here. What do you think, man? I mean, I, I, I say my number one is the main event. Obviously, that's kind of a cop-out because there's a reason it's the main event, but it's the one I have the most interest in at this time. Um, curious to see how Chase some more does after his, his last fight where he lost, which I – Kind of didn't have a lot of hope for him going into that, but let's see how he bounces back and see if he could uh, bring maybe some new level of conditioning and maybe see if he's improved his boxing skills himself uh, uh, going into this match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, I think um, this card's interesting. It's, it's one of the more weird Misfits cards. I mean, we've had some big ones. We've had some mid-sized ones. This one's somewhere in the middle. Because uh, Le'Veon Bell and JMX are both relatively large names. But then the rest of the card, there's some interesting guys here and there. But um, for the most part, not a whole lot of star power. But I'm interested to see how it goes. Um, and shout out Kimbo Slice Jr. I know that he called for a boxing match. He's been calling to box for a while now. Obviously, he had a run in Bells who didn't exactly go the way he probably hoped. But, I mean, you got to give that that kid credit, dude. I remember whenever he took up MMA. He took up MMA in, like, 2016. I remember whenever he his amateur fight, his first ever amateur fight, and, like, went viral because he fucking face-planted this guy. And he was like, oh, fuck, Kimbo Slice. So, like, as if Kimbo Slice wasn't a big enough problem. Now we got his fucking son flattening people. Um, and he's just stayed around. He's, he's been out here, man. He had a solid run in Bellator considering he hadn't had much experience. And excited to see what he does here. So uh, we will go ahead and see. Um, and the last, last thing, Creator Clash 2 happened. Uh, we didn't really preview it, because admittedly, kind of forgot that it, that it happened. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean, give me your thoughts on this card. Obviously, I-Dubs lost again, and, um, Alex Wasabi picked up a win, and people were talking about, you know, who, who will he face next? Our boy, we got a shout out, Harley Mortenstein. From Epic Meal Time, I'm just trying to imagine the mental image of, of trying to explain to myself in like 2009, like, hey, there's gonna be a day that John Morrison is gonna fight the big bacon guy from Epic Meal Time, and you're gonna watch that shit. And you're like, it's just like that just doesn't even compute. I mean, what do you think about that card? I know that you probably didn't see much because obviously we were out at UFC at the time, but from that that you did see, what'd you think? I mean, it looked interesting. Uh, I've never been like super into the creator clash events, uh, mainly because I don't have a lot of interest in the names they bring in. But as far as like the three matches that I did see, I was entertained. Uh, I still love your reaction when we're at UCKC and uh, fucking 
they go back to the quarters and then you see that Chris Barnett is there training or, or the coach for, uh, or at least opposition. You're like, fuck. No yeah. Well, here's the, the way it is. Yeah. Well, okay. So John Morrison, like, I don't know. I saw somebody asked Harley why he took this fight. And he said, because I'm, because I'm a really chill guy. And I'm like, all right, that's a pretty good reason. But, uh, I mean, fuck, dude, like, John Morrison is, pro wrestlers don't really get the credit they deserve, but they're professional fucking athletes, you know what I mean? And John Morrison has been at, John Morrison is, like, one of the most athletic wrestlers I've ever seen in my life. Like, if you're going to pick a guy to just fucking go into a new sport, you're, like, probably going to take that motherfucker, because he just does things that the human body should not be able to do because he's so athletic, you know what I mean? He's done some crazy shit in the ring. And also, I know that he's done capoeira, and he's done some other martial arts over the years and stuff. So whenever they announced Harley was going to be fighting me, I was like, oh, that's... I mean, well, maybe Harley will just be so big, he'll just eat him. You know what I mean? Like, why doesn't, just, why doesn't the bigger bacon man just eat the smaller pro wrestler, you know? Like, it's just... But, um, yeah, man, I mean, the wonder that they announced that fight, I was like, it's going to be a tough one. And then it proved to be exactly that. But hey, he had a pretty badass entrance. I mean, you gotta get part of the credit, dude. There's some people in YouTube boxing who do not, we just gotta go full on WWE with this. This is what I said earlier. Like, just go all in on the entertainment aspect. Because we're not coming, like, yeah, we like watching people buy a box and fight, but like, these are YouTubers, man. If we're trying to fight like actual top level fights, we'll just watch those. Like, let's, let, give me some fucking Harley from Epic Neal time coming through the crowd dressed like fucking Solid Snake. Give me that. You know what I mean? It's just, just give me John Morrison coming out with fucking Hacksaw Jim Duggan and, and a bunch of other wrestlers, you know what I mean? Like, do some cool, fun stuff. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm kind of on your page. I've never really been as big of a fan of Creator Clash as I have for um, other, like, like, misfits and stuff. But, you know, I think that they have a good place. I think it's good that they're that they're still around. Um they just serve a different purpose, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, any other closing thoughts on that or anything else you want to talk about before we go in and close out? No, nothing specific, man. I mean, we got a jam-packed week of combat. Same when we come – what are we coming back to? I don't even know. Fuck. Song Yudong and uh, Ricky Simone. And there's also – yeah, there's actually nothing next week outside of that, so never mind. But, yeah, I mean, it should, hey, should we, be fun. We get to recap this whole week, and it's a pretty big card. I don't know how – I think there's a – what is it, 13 fights? I mean, that's – I mean, that's around what they always have. But I'm looking at it, and it looks like it's a lot more. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But, I mean, we'll have fun recapping, and because there will be a lot to talk about. And uh hope you guys enjoy the show, man. We've gotten a lot of success, obviously, over the last couple of, uh you know, months. And we're going to keep that going. We're trying to keep the show – as uh, as good as uh, we possibly can, man. And we appreciate all the support and all the people watching. I'm at Josh Shemanoff on Twitter. He's at Angel Ortega underscore 01 at Quartzite Sound for all things relating to the show. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace and bye, Grease. Mouse click.